My god, I'm a mess right now. What a lot of people on the internet, my name is Kevin and welcome back to another video. Okay guys, so it is day one of the stay at home reading rush and I am so excited. I wasn't sure if I was going to participate in this readathon because I had loads of different video ideas that I have planned that are coming soon by the way, so look out for all of those vlogs that I have planned. I have Reading the Hose by Stephanie Meyer for the first time coming, I have also just loads of different vlogs and stuff. I have planned and I wasn't gonna do the reading rush because I was like you know what it's gonna interfere with that reading but I think I'm just gonna put off on those videos and just do the reading rush because honestly it's just so fun I love how the whole community on booktube and like book twitter everywhere just all comes together for this readathon and I just wanted to do it and I knew if I would have severe FOMO if I didn't do it so I had to do it. This is very last minute. I literally pulled my TBR together for it really, really quickly. And also, if you do not know what the Reading Rush is, I will leave a link down below to the announcement video on the official Reading Rush YouTube channel where Ariel announced everything about the Stay at Home Reading Rush because this is a readathon that happens every single summer for a week. But this is a special one they have announced for everyone because of everything that's going on right now where we can all stay at home and do a readathon and just all come together and read books and just like have a distraction from everything that's going on right now and I am just so excited for it. I also saw the badges because if you guys don't know there is a Reading Rush website where you log on you make your own profile and stuff and then you put in all of the books you're planning on reading because there's always reading challenges like you have to pick a book with say green on the cover and then if you read a book with green on the cover you get that badge added to your profile and so for the stay at home reading rush there is new badges and I got all of the badges last summer for the 2019 reading rush and when I saw the new badges I was like I have to take part like I want the badges so badly I need them and that's how I knew I wanted to take part this time I was like mm. I need the badges, we're getting them sis, I am a Pokemon master. So, I have pulled my books together and uh, honestly, my TBR is a little bit thick. I do this every time. If you saw my reading brush from last year, I met a very thick TBR, but like, she finessed, she's amazing, and she ended up reading every single book, and I'm still very proud of myself. So for this one, I am trying to do it again, and it might happen, it might not happen, but I'm still very excited at the same time. A couple of these I could end up doubling up on if I want to, to try and make myself get all of the badges, but there are four different reading challenges, so I have picked four books, and I'm hoping to read all four and get all four of the badges, that is my goal. So before I show you guys my TBR, let me know down below in the comments if you are also taking part. Let me know what is on your TBR. Also, can we talk about how the lighting looks right now? Like, it looks so subtle. We love that. It's very cozy. Oh, we stan. But let's get into my TBR because she is a little bit thick. So there are four different reading challenges. I don't know exactly the order that they're in, but I'm going to go through them anyways. So one of the first ones I know is to read a book with a house on the cover. So for that one, I have picked Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu's The Red Scrolls of Magic, which is Magnus's and Alex's book, and I have not read this yet. I've actually read, I think, one or two chapters because we have this in my bookshop that I work in, and I remember picking it up one day when I was in work when I was really quiet and I read like the first two chapters or so, but I haven't read much more than that and I'm just really looking forward to this. Magnus and Alec are one of my favorite characters in the Mortal Instrument series. Literally love them so much. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this. It's also not that big for a Cassandra Clare book. It is 345 pages, which honestly is not that bad. And as you can see from the front cover, I hope this is Paris that's on the cover and there's lots of different houses and buildings down there. They could just be generic buildings, but like I'm going with houses because they look like houses to me. Especially the one down here in the bottom right and this one here. You can't really see it. But there's houses on the cover. I'm going with it. It's working for me. The next challenge is to read a book in the same room the entire time. So basically this also could just be like read a book in one sitting 
kind of thing. And I have chosen this book, and I'm just going to read it when I'm in bed, like, because that's obviously going to be my bedroom I'm going to be reading in. So the book that I have chosen to read in the same room the entire time is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. Now, this is an LGBTQIA plus book that I am very excited to read. I recently bought this when I was in London back in January when I went to the Gaze the Words bookshop, which is an LGBTQIA plus bookshop in London that I would highly recommend you go to it's such an amazing shop and I picked up this book when I was there because I've heard many great things about it and I'm just really looking forward to reading this I literally don't know that much about it but I know it deals with like gender identity and discovering who you are I'll give you guys a little bit of the synopsis I haven't actually read this myself so we're going through a little journey together. So it says, this is Michael's story. Join him as he enters the world with tiny feathers, eyelashes. Travel from school to college where he discovers his flock and comes to terms with his identity as a mixed race gay teen. At university, take a seat in the audience and watch him find his wings as a drag artist, the black flamingo. I'm so excited already, oh my god. A bold story about discovering that only you get the privilege of choosing who you are. There is power in embracing your uniqueness. What's your story? Question mark. Oh my god, I'm so excited to read this. I actually just teared up. But also look at these pages. Ooh, pink feathers. We love a flamingo. And then there's actually a flamingo on the dust jacket. Iconic. So I'm really fo looking forward to reading this. I've literally heard so many great things. So I'm really hoping it's going to be a great one. This is also told in verse. So it's like written like in poem kind of style. So I feel like this is going to be a really quick read for me. And that's why I want to put on this TBR as well. Because, you know, for reading Russian stuff, you want books that are not going to take that hard or that long to read even. And oh my god, this makes me so happy. Oh, I kind of maybe just spoiled myself a little bit, but I literally just flicked to the back because I was trying to see how long it is. And there's just all these different websites at the back about like LGBT and stuff and like for you to get in contact with people after reading this book. That makes me so happy, oh my freaking God. The next one is to read a book set somewhere that you want to go to. So for this, you guys are probably gonna be like, oh, Kevin, sweetie, no, honey, why did you do this? And I'm gonna be like, I agree, guys, why did I do this? And that book is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Mm-hmm, yeah. I see, I see what you're seeing. So this book is, it's 592 pages long. Interesting. I thought this was gonna be like 600 or so pages. So anyways back to this. This is obviously set in London Which you guys know London is one of my favorite places in the world And I honestly want to go to London so badly right now because I just it's like my second home And I just love London. I feel like it's where I thrive. It's where I want to move to I just love there so much. She's very thick and I think this is probably gonna be one I'm gonna leave for like the last day or like I'm gonna leave this as my last priority because it's such a thick book. I'm looking forward to getting to it, seeing what all the hype is about. I've heard many great things about this and I am just so excited to go back to London Institute, meet new characters, and I'm just so excited to read this. And then finally, the last book that's on my TBR is for the last challenge, which is to read a book that will make you smile because especially through this time right now, we all need to, do anything that's gonna put a smile on our faces and take our minds off everything that's going on right now. So I definitely want something that's gonna make me smile so freaking much. And I know what you guys are all thinking that I would pick Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Abatali. But guys, I feel like I reread it so many times at this point and it hasn't been long enough since I last reread it. I think I reread it in November or October? November, October, I think, is when I last reread it. And I just don't think it's time for another reread just yet. Like, we'll save it for a little bit closer to another time. So, I have chosen Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. Because, as you guys know, this is my favourite graphic novel series of all time. And I actually have never read the physical paperback edition. Because I actually read this as it was coming out online because this was also a webcomic and that's where I was reading it so I've never actually read the physical book itself and 
and I think I might tab some of my favorite parts because this is one of my favorites and I know for a fact it's gonna put a smile on my face because I love this book so freaking much it's so adorable so cute it makes me feel single i just love the romance it it just makes me so happy they are the four books that i am planning on reading in this readathon i also love the color scheme we've got going on here it's kind of green pink we love that if i manage to read those four i might end up reading something else but anyways now that it is after 12 and the reading rush has officially begun. I am going to start some reading in bed before I go to sleep. So the one I think I'm going to start with is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. Or, or do I want to start with The Red Scrolls? No, I'm going to start with The Black Flamingo. Okay guys, so I have just been reading and I am now up to page 94 of The Black Flamingo. I'm also using this Hufflepuff bookmark that I got from my friend Ilse, which is from the Noble Collection and I just love this bookmark so much. I'm reading it really fast because as I've said, this book is written in verse so it's very quick to read. And so far I'm already really liking it. The main character is just going through a lot of different issues at the minute. I think where I am right now, they're about 12 or 14 years of age. And basically it's just been like their whole life from being like a four year old up till now. They've had different things going on between their parents splitting up and stuff like that. And they've been dealing with their sexuality. And there is a part in here already that really connected with me just so much. And the main character is called Michael. And Michael really wanted to get a Barbie for their birthday. And basically Michael's mom got him a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle doll or action figure. And obviously Michael wasn't really that happy about that because they wanted a Barbie. And I relate to that because there is a part in my childhood when I was growing up where... I used to play with Bratz dolls, and I've never actually said that on camera or anything, but it's a thing I used to do with my cousins. I used to play with Bratz dolls. I used to get them, like, I used to buy Bratz dolls, but I was always kind of, like, ashamed to get them because I kind of knew that it was something I wasn't supposed to be playing with. Emphasis on this, because I just feel like toys, especially for kids, shouldn't be, like, gendered at all. And I don't know, I just really connected with that part in the book. It brought back some memories that I knew I had, and it's something that I haven't related to with a character before. And I just really enjoyed those chapters, and it actually just made me a little bit emotional when I was reading them, because it just, I don't know, it just really connected with me. And I know that this book is already going to be an emotional read. So I'm going to go to sleep and I will wake up in the morning and I'll come into my bedroom to read more of this because I have to read this in my bedroom because I have to read this book in the same room. No. I said no. Ugh. No. What? Ugh. <laughs> I don't want to get up. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hi. How are ya? Oh my god, I sound like Jeffree Star. Hi, how are ya? <laughs> no, she's a good girl. I give you your boobs. Boobs. Okay guys, so I am now up and I'm also sitting on my floor in my sitting room or living room. You may call it a living room, I call it a sitting room. That's what we call it over here in Ireland. And I'm just sitting on the floor. Don't know why, like literally I'm on the floor. Like, why am I sitting on the floor? But regardless, I'm just sitting here because I love this backdrop. Like, it just looks pretty. So I was like, I'm gonna sit here. 
And anyways, so you guys know I made progress obviously last night with the Black Flamingo. I'm not gonna talk much more because it's gonna be the exact same. I literally haven't read anything else yet. So I'm gonna try finish that today because it's so quick to read because it's in verse. So I think I'm definitely gonna finish that. So love that for me. And then also because it's really nice weather out again in Ireland. Like honestly, Ireland suddenly just gets amazing weather while everyone is in quarantine and we can't go anywhere. Ireland just decides, okay, let's become a nice country with nice weather. So I think I'm just gonna read outside like on chair or something or like on my, my swinging chair outside and just read and get some reading done. So of course if I'm reading outside I can't read The Black Flamingo because I have to read that all in the same room so that has to be read in my bedroom. But the other book that I just want to read when I'm outside today is The Red Skulls of Magic by Cassandra Clare. I'm gonna get into this and read some of that because obviously I want to read it as well because this is for the house on the cover so I want to read some of that. But also the main reason I'm doing this little tip right now is because I just got a package from FedEx and it is not from FedEx actually. Why did I say it's from FedEx? <laughs> FedEx did not send me a package. <laughs> they delivered my package, but I got it from Zaffel and you guys know I love Zaffel for their clothing. This is not sponsored by the way. That sounded like I was doing a sponsored post. It's not because if Zaffel sponsored me, I would be thriving. Like, I would love that, like I love their clothes. But I've ordered some new hoodies. Anyways, I have them and they're so cute. They're pink and just very pastel. Oh, they're stunning. They're just so pretty. I'm so excited. God, look at it. It's so pretty. <laughs> Oh my god, this is such a gay jumper as well. I love that for me. Like it's such a pride jumper. Like that's literally all the colors. Oh, this is everything. And then the other one I got is very like K-pop related because it has like the that <laughs> the love heart, the, the, the K-pop love heart. Pink jumper with a little love heart. And it obviously has a hood. Oh. It's so stunning. This one looks really big. Oh, she's everything. Oh. Oh, she is honestly everything. We love this. Oh, <laughs> I am living right now. This is so pretty. Do I look good in pink? Did I just snap? I think I just snapped. I don't know, why do I feel like a boss ass bitch? Oh my God, I, <laughs> I'm living. Oh my God. Truly snapped with this purchase. Who's a fashion icon? Myself. I stand myself. Look at this. Ooh, bring it. Mm -mm. Okay, I just do the Macarena. <laughs> I was trying to Vogue and then I ended up doing the Macarena. I just love these. Like, these are iconic. We love a good jumper. I'm so happy right now. I'm gonna go have some breakfast and then I'm gonna start doing some reading because I got some books to finish. Okay, so now on page 262, I'm almost finished it, but there is just this one passage on this page right here and the whole paragraph of it is just so amazing and I just wanted to read it out. It's not a spoiler or anything, it's just really deals with race and it's just such an amazing passage and I just think I need to read it out. You both need to understand the black woman, black man, black trans person is always last to be thought of as attractive in this white supremacist society. We are all black and white alike, shown a beauty standard of light skin and good hair, maybe big lips, maybe a big bum, but hardly ever on someone with darker skin. When a black person says they're only into white people, that's internalized racism. When a white person says they're only into black people, that's fetishization, which is also a form of racism. If their skin or racialized features matter more to you than the person within, that's racism. I can't be your friend without calling this out. Your ignorance may be innocent, but the racism is real. I want both of you to think about how what you said might make me feel. I just think that was a really powerful part of the book and I really liked that. There's so many different quotes in here. There's also been another part where I was talking about masculinity and how men are like a sandcastle and like the bucket is patriarchy and once you remove that bucket, the men start to crumble and the castle starts to fall because they're the patriarchy keeps them all together. And I just think this book is it has so many powerful different parts in it. And that part talking about race was really powerful to me. And the other part about patriarchy was so powerful. There's so many different powerful parts about gender, about sexuality. Uh, there's a lot in here and I'm just really enjoying this. <sighs> 
my god, I'm a mess right now. Wow, okay. This whole epilogue, I can't. I, I literally can't. It's called How to Come Out as Gay. And it's just beautiful. It's just everything. And I... Just so many things. Like, don't come out because you think society expects you to. Don't come out for yourself. Come out to yourself. Shout it. Sing it. Softly stir. Correct those who say they knew before you did. That's not how sexuality works. It's yours to define. Be effeminate doesn't make you gay. Being sensitive doesn't make you gay. Being gay makes you gay. Be a bit gay. Be very gay. Be the glare that shows up in unexpected places. <sighs> it's so good. I don't even know what to say right now. I finished it. I loved it so much. I think I just have to give this a 5 out of 5 stars because of the reaction it just gave me. There was definitely parts of it that just weren't perfect and like that's why I think I don't know if I should give it five stars but I just feel like the way it's after impacting me it has to be a five stars if you know what I mean. This book just deals with so many different things. It deals with sexuality, it deals with race, it deals with gender, it deals with internalized homophobia, it deals with homophobia, it deals with drag. It, oh, it just has so many things in here that were just so amazing and of course I could relate to the main character in the terms of the gay representation and stuff and I just loved this so so much. I am definitely going to read more stuff by Dean Atta. I'd highly recommend that you read it. It's a basically a coming of age story for this young boy and he goes off to college and then he becomes intertwined into the drag culture and helps find himself and comes to terms with loads of different things that's going on in his life. It was just amazing and I'm just so happy that I read this. <sighs> I loved it. I loved it so much. So now that I have cried already into the first day of the reading rush, we love an emotional start to the reading rush. I'm gonna go outside and start the Red Scrolls of Magic book, which is the book with a house on the cover. I'm going to go start that one, read outside because it's so nice out and yes, starting book two on the first day, we're ahead of schedule, love that for me. Okay, so me being me, I forgot that there's supposed to be challenges to the reading rush and there's an Instagram challenge for today, so if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, you should go follow me, my username is just irishreader underscore and I need to take the Instagram picture and the challenge for today is to take a picture where you love to read. And as you guys probably all know, I do a lot of my reading on my bed. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to take an Instagram picture here. Let's hope I got one. Okay guys, so I think I'm going to wrap the vlog up here, but I do want to update just before I end today's vlog that I did start The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and I'm up to page 50 and I'm on chapter 5 and so far I am enjoying it. This book is definitely for us gays and also just us Magnus and Alec, Malik stands. Like this book is definitely for all of us so we're thriving. But so far nothing really has happened yet. We're just kind of finding out like what the plot of this book is going to be about. And I am kind of also confused as to the timeline when this book is taking place because there's a character who came up in it, like Tessa, which you would know from other books if you've read the Cassandra Clare books, that's not a spoiler either. Like Alec doesn't really know her, but like I've read all of the other books and I know that he knows her. So I'm confused as to when this book takes place. So if any of you guys know, please let me know down below in the comments so I can just kind of get like an idea as to the timeline because I'm a little bit confused right now. So I'm hoping that I will like this and we shall see when I read a bit more tomorrow in day two. And then also you guys already know because I already talked about it that I have read The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. So by the end of day one of the stay at home reading rush, I have completed one book and I have started a second one so I'm on track to winning the stay at home reading rush. I know it's not really a competition but I'm in com competition with myself if that makes sense you know what I mean. <laughs> and also just in case you're wondering because I know it's still daytime right now you're probably like why is Kevin ending the vlog now but basically when it comes to the reading rush I for me I set my days at a certain time limit so that I can stop 
then edit the vlog and get the vlog uploaded and take a break from reading. So I always stop my vlogs about 6 p.m. every single day and then I edit and I upload and then I start basically my next day. So it's like 6 o'clock now so that's why I'm ending this vlog here so I can go edit it and upload it so you guys can watch it. But yeah, that is going to be it for day one guys. Let me know down below if you are taking part in the reading rush, what you guys are reading, what is on your TBR and how are you doing? Have you read anything yet? Let me know down below in the comments. Also if you've read either of these books, let me know down below in the comments as well and we can talk about them. But other than that, that is going to be it for this video guys and I shall see you all next time in my next one. So goodbye guys.